Wrong button. Oh. Wrong button. Did you get it this time? Uh, maybe. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> that button. Okay. There we go. Oh, goodness. We're live. Renee couldn't find the right button. I was hitting the wrong button. You're always hitting buttons. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Not push them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mine frequently. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's been a morning. Um... I've had nothing but like derp issues today. I have no idea why, but uh, hopefully it has resolved itself and we can get through today without too many major mistakes. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day. It certainly feels like spring is on the way. It has warmed up considerably on our end of the country. And so we have a lot of dripping and, and snow melting and fingers crossed we don't see any more snow. Maybe. Who knows? It's Canada in the spring, so anything's possible. It's second winter. Second winter. <laughs> Entirely possible. I mean, we've had snow here in June, so who knows? But uh, it is warming up. We have a beautiful, beautiful sunshiny day out there today. Blue skies, they're just incredible. It's a beautiful day. Uh, but it is a little, it's cool. It's damp. It's spring. It's spring in the Maritimes. So... It's all good. And with that in mind, so we're doing something springy today. We're doing daffodils. Uh, this one is a really fun and easy project. It's ideal if you're just getting started with uh, acrylic painting or decorative painting. This one is really easy to do. It has uh, a great success rate. It's easy to paint and it only uses a couple of really basic painting techniques. So it's, it's a fun one to do. No stress for this one. No stress. Um, I did get some happy mail this week. I uh, gotta love my friend Sandy. <laughs> She's so sweet. She takes such good care of me. Um, I have been juggling with my uh, heated tool for the last few weeks. Uh, they're not so easy to find here in Canada. Um, Sandy got a bunch in stock and God love her. She sent me one to replace this beast. Um, it has been dropped just one too many times and so it has a tendency to get a little hot uh, a little too hot and um, it's a little more noisy than it used to be so she in in her sweetie she's such a sweetheart she replaced it for me so I have to unplug this one today and plug in the new one and uh, of course Sandy never just sends one little thing if you've gotten happy mail from Miss Sandy you know what I'm talking about um, She's been playing with her new toy. She got herself a Glowforge and she's been <laughs> she's been really creating. So she sent me a whole bunch of goodies. Um, so if you're looking on her website, you have to go and check out some of the stuff that she's been making with that Glowforge because it's pretty freaking awesome. Um, one of my favorites, this one is getting hung up in my studio. It says, I have too much paint, said no one ever. And that one applies to me. I, <laughs> I have a lot of paint. Yeah. So I, I love this. I think it's very cool. It's got her website down at the bottom. Um, then she sent me this. Check this out, bud. Oh, cool. Yeah, for the year of the rabbit, which is my year. I was born in the year of the rabbit. So that's pretty cool. And then she's done some really cute things with, uh, with these little cutouts. She's put some laser designs yeah. on top. Really Great. cool. So, but then. She knows I'm a bug person. She knows I love my bees, my dragonflies, and my butterflies. So she made me a whole bunch of honeybees and honeycomb with the laser. Gorgeous little appliques. So those are going to see some use. And I'm obsessed with butterflies <laughs> lately. I've been using them quite a bit. And she sent me an envelope full of the little butterflies. And then there's these. These are freaking gorgeous. Beautiful uh, laser cut and then laser etched dragonflies and she sent me a bunch of different ones so you know they're going to pop up in something because these are just too pretty <laughs> so i got a whole bunch of laser goodies and then i think my my most favorite thing in the in the whole box i mean there's bee stencils and and whatnot she sent me a whole bunch of goodies is this i'm the queen of phone stands she sent me the best phone stand ever <laughs> Neatness doesn't count, and perfection is to be avoided at all costs. And it's covered in bumblebees. Like, how how awesome is that? So, I just love this. I think it's the coolest. So, that will be getting plenty of use in my little world 
In fact, I'll put it to use right now. There we go. Did you turn off your notifications? Probably should have her. The thing will be dinging like. <laughs> Please turn off your notifications. <laughs> okay. There. They're off. <laughs> We're going to be trying to get the dings out of the, the video. Oh, and the, the other thing that was. We're uh, live. I can't. I. I <laughs> <laughs> well, edit them. I'm uh, going to have to turn part of the stream deck into a soundboard and have like, you a know, little censorship beep. Bur beep. Oh, <laughs> that's what we need. Um, and then enclosed in this was this gorgeous little journal. Like I was very spoiled this week. My girl Sandy spoiled me rotten this week. So I've got lots of goodies to create with and play with. So thank you, my dear. <laughs> I absolutely love all this stuff. It's fabulous. And then um, we're doing a special event for i don't want to say easter because it's not really an easter thing it's a spring thing so uh we're going to be doing a special event on the 25th of march i've got some really great giveaways for that day um as usual our suppliers have been incredibly generous so we have uh stencils from m2 of course from both my sandy and myself and then uh we have some goodies from Dynasty Brush, we have goodies from DecoArt, and we have goodies from Southern Ridge Trading. So we have some really great, great giveaways for March 25th. So mark your calendar, put that up there so that you can come and join us. And let me show you what we're doing. I just loved this. I, I, I don't know, I came up with this the other day. I saw a photograph of a bunny, thought a bunny would be a great idea. So this is what we're painting. And what I like about this one is you can paint it on both sides. So because it goes on the stand. So the kits come with the bunny, the two butterflies that you need, plus the stand. And plus the color pattern is enclosed in that as well. That's for the kit. Or you can buy just the surface set by itself or the e-packet. So if you have a great woodcutter handy, he could probably cut it out for you. But uh, we have them available on the website. So mark your calendar, March 25th. We're gonna have some fun. And what else? What else? Did you have anything to add? Nope. 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 Yep. I'm, <laughs> I'm knocking stuff all over the place. Give me two seconds. I'm gonna put this over here so I don't make a mess. <coughs> oh, shush you <laughs> if you could see this studio that would be yeah. <laughs> so i don't make a mess that's funny, funny. <laughs> uh, well it's my studio i can do whatever i want in here <laughs> right fair enough <laughs> it is your studio it is my studio i get to play in here and it's a lot of fun so we're going to be painting this um, I like this. I think, just think this is a fun, it's a fun technique. It is not hard. Um, if you're just starting your journey in decorative painting, you're going to find this one uh, is actually not as intimidating as it may look. Now, I used a, a slight play on words when I wrote this pattern. It's called watered color, not watercolor, watered color uh, daffodils. Next week, we're going to be doing the crocus. So it'll be the same technique, but using a completely different color palette. Well, a different color palette and uh, but uh, some similar techniques so we're going to be working on that today I like this I love this technique I've done it before and it just you can do so many things with it so you're going to enjoy this I know I'm going to <laughs> uh, Becca Bruckner says I love dragonflies oh. I designed a tattoo from on my shoulder if oh man I'm getting old yeah <laughs> You're running Spindy. out of arm? Um, <laughs> <laughs> if one that is beautiful. Yep. I have... Uh, she has I, one. I have dragonfly tattoos, too. I have on my uh, right leg. I have dragonfly tattoo there. And then I have bumblebees on my other leg. I will not get a butterfly tattoo. Uh, S Suzanne already says your kits are out of stock. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wasn't that just put up like a half hour ago? About an hour ago, yeah. Yeah, you're out of stock. Okay. Well, we'll have to put some more kits up today. So. <laughs> kits are <laughs> out will, of stock. We kits will get some more kits up today. Wow. Those went quick. Yeah. But it's a fun little piece, the, the little bunnies. You would have laughed this morning. I had bunnies everywhere. 
everywhere. They were all over the tables, all over the counters. They were multiplying? They were <laughs> multiplying. <laughs> I should not. See, I left them alone in yeah, the studio yeah. last night. And this is what I get for it. So I have uh, bunnies everywhere. So yeah, we do have more. We will adjust that uh, after the live today so that we have, we get more up there. So um, if you guys are ready to get started playing with these watered color daffodils, so am I. This is a fun piece to do. Uh, I always think that we spend so much time trying to cover everything up. Um, that sometimes we kind of overthink things. And this one I wanted to simplify. So we're working with a white background. You can use light buttermilk. You can use warm white. You can use whatever you want. It just needs to be a light colored background. And then we're, I'm working with this. Now in the pattern, you might notice. I, th I think we forgot something in Linda's is she giving me a, a, a nudge? A nudge. <laughs> okay. We do have giveaways today. <laughs> we always have giveaways. I'm very fortunate that uh, companies like Decorate and Dynasty um, make sure that we have goodies for you guys. And uh, to just so that you know we appreciate you coming to watch every Saturday. <laughs> uh, this week we have my signature stencil brushes. Oh, really? Yes. So there is a signature stencil brush in each one of those giveaways. Plus there is an art stuff bag and uh, a few goodies from both Tombow and from M Square and from, I don't know who else. There's a whole bunch of goodies in there. Boom. So it's a nice little goodie bag um, and, and valued at about $30. Cool. So it's a nice little one. So yeah, we have three of those to give away today. We are going to have eight giveaways for the March 25th event. Jeez. And they're nice giveaways. They're really nice. So I'm excited about that. So we have eight. We got some of those books that we got to give away too. Well, we, yeah, we do have to give away some books too. So uh, I, we'll keep that for then. But yeah, we have eight really nice giveaways. All courtesy of Southern Ridge Trading, Deckwart, Dynasty Brush, uh, Tombow USA. Sorry, I always forget that one. And uh, Stencil Studio. So we have some nice giveaways for that March 25th event. So I'm excited, I'm excited. So we're going to start with our base coat. We've got, uh, I have two coats of warm white on here. It's not a big stretch. And uh, we're going to work with a little bit of matte medium. I like the matte medium because it dries to a nice flat. It's easier to trace and transfer things on with this. So matte medium, I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit and we're going to apply a pretty generous coat of matte medium to the whole surface. Make sure you get it well distributed across this surface. Again, neatness doesn't really count. We just want to make sure that everything is covered. Like so. So that's pretty uniform. And I got my little spray bottle. That's not my spray bottle. That's <laughs> for cleaning my glasses. There it is. Okay, got my little spray bottle. Would not do to try and do this with the eyeglass cleaner. So I've got, uh, this is a Tim Holtz paper. A Tim Holtz tissue paper for this one. I did put a nice little um, image in the pattern so that if you can't get your hands on the Tim Holtz paper or the tissue paper, then you have something that you can use in the background. Now, I just misted this lightly with a little bit of water uh, just to wet it. Now, what that does is the paper stretches a little bit and then I can use my fingers to smooth this out, make sure everything's in place. <laughs> Notice she's not wearing any rings. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use my little mini brayer to roll this out. Now, I am currently out of stock on this, uh, but I do know that Sandy McTeer has them on her website. 
on the if you're looking for one of these little mini brayers they're fantastic does deb have them on hers no she doesn't no no speaking of deb uh oh um she had a little bit of drama this week with her <laughs> oh, yeah. her uh svg store on etsy anyway she finally got it all sorted out and her her new painting with friend or um primsies a touch of primsy uh website on etsy is back up and running thank heavens she had a very stressful week getting that sorted out but um she's got some fabulous svgs available so if you have one of those laser machines or if you have a cricket or any one of those cutting machines she has some fantastic svgs up there so uh, those cut files are sensational she's been working so hard to get those up and running uh, so if you want to cut your own uh, wood surfaces if you have one of those uh, home laser cutters you can get some really great svgs from deb with the for her adorable little gnomes oh my goodness are those ever stinking cute so i'm just using my sanding sponge here to wear the paper away at the edges like so so that i got a nice clean finish on the edge and i'm going to do the same thing all the way around And Miss Deb has also got, uh, she's clearancing out a whole bunch of Stampenda stamps. So if you're looking for stamps, go and check her out. Because she's got a bunch that she's getting rid of. <laughs> Good gravy. Jessica Killen's wondering if you're getting a Glowforge. I am not. <laughs> I don't, one, don't have enough room left in this studio for a Glowforge. They're yeah. big. It, well, yeah, they're fair size, um, but uh, I I barely have time to do the things I want to do now. Imagine if I added a new toy. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I will leave that to Sandy and De and Miss Deb. Okay, so I'm just using a piece of damp shop towel to wipe off the excess matte medium that sort of oozes out. Where where can you get the Tim Holtz paper? The Tim Holtz paper you can get at stamp, uh, no, sorry, scrapbook.com. You can get it on Amazon and you can get it on joggles.com. Joggles.com. Joggles, .com. Um, joggles and, and um, Stampers Anonymous is another one. They carry a lot of the Tim Holtz products. So if you're looking for uh, some of his tissue paper, now, this is the one that I used. I, you know, typical of me, I have to have at least two of everything in my studio. So um, if I'm down to one, then I'm out. These I bought some time ago. I'm not even sure if this particular one is still available. But um, this one is called... I don't know if I can find the name of it here. Uh. Postal, it's called. It's awesome tissue paper. Postal. Postal. <laughs> Postal. <laughs> Postal. Postal. It has an e at the end. Oh, um, Diane Clark just sent us 200 stars. Nice. That goes to the puppers. That goes to the puppers. And the glitter fund. Nah, <laughs> That's right, too. I did say stars included, eh? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh. Well, that was $2 into the glitter fund. <laughs> yep. We're out almost one third of the way. Almost. Uh, I can't really see it. It's at $421.91. Oh, you can see it? I can see it. Okay. Besides, I have, I, I'm the one that holds the account that has all that money. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm anxious. There we go. So I'm just uh, using my little heated tool here to... Oh, that's just <laughs> over 25%. It's yeah. 28, 28 point zero six. Six. Yep. So I've got my paper in there, nice and tight. 
and I'm going to come back in with my matte medium and I'm going to seal this paper down. I like this paper because it's translucent. So whatever color that you base coat with is going to show through and that's why I, I wanted a lighter value. So I've got a little bit of warm white or light buttermilk, just a light color. And make sure that you get it on all of the edges just to seal the edges down nice and tight. There we go. Little bit of matte medium goes a long way. I'm no longer receiving notifications when you go live. I've tried troubleshooting on my end and still not working. Um, uh, hit the follow button on the Tracy Morrow live page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just hitting the, it's the one thing about this. Facebook has made so many changes that if you're not following the stream, it doesn't necessarily send you. Uh, this was on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. If you're not getting notifications, uh, hit the bell icon. Yeah, just hit it again for whatever reason. It may have been turned off or. Yeah. I'm finding I have to be more and more careful about how I word things. You, Renee, you know we're just waiting for the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> To blast you with donations <laughs> that's the thing i said before the 12 days, days of christmas because yeah. on the 12 days of christmas if you guys have hit the goal i will do a glitter beard for the duration of the 12 days of christmas <laughs> hmm. and we only have 276 days to go mm. <laughs> well we actually don't no. Because it's only active when it's live. Yes, that's true. But it says <laughs> 276 days to go. I know. Uh, it's not 276 lives to go. No, <laughs> just days. So. Divide that by seven. I love how this <laughs> technique, when you spray the paper just a little bit, you don't have to saturate it, but just spray it a little bit. And look how nice and smooth it lays down. There's no ripples. There's no bubbles. And then when you dry it and let it dry, the paper shrinks again. And then you get this really nice, tight, smooth fit finish. So now we're ready to do the next step for this. And that involves my fugly brush and some white paint. So I'm using warm white and my fugly brush. Shouldn't have told us that. Uh-oh. <laughs> So I mean, I've thinned out some warm white, and I do mean thinned out. And I'm going to apply this right over top of that paper. Now, essentially what we're doing is just knocking all of that back a little bit. Just a little bit. We want to subdue that and it's going to create a bunch of different textures, visual textures in the finished piece. A lot of people don't get the notifications from YouTube. Huh. It could be a setting on whatever device you have too. Yeah. If you don't have it set as a push notification, it, you, you won't get it. Yeah. It'll just show up in your notifications. Yeah. In the list. A push notification actually wakes up your phone and says hey so and so is going live or yeah so i'm going to dry this and then i'm looking at this on the screen and it's still quite strong so i'm going to do it one more coat i'm just going to make sure it's good and dry that's what this thing is so handy for <laughs> Now, when you're thinning out this paint, you can use a little bit of Joe Sonia's Fast Dry to thin it out, or you can just use water. Either one will work. So i put one more coat of that white on. I 
You guys know I love my backgrounds. Backgrounds have to be interesting to support something. And as pretty as those daffodils are, um, if the background was just plain, it wouldn't be all that interesting. It wouldn't have a whole lot of character. But because we're putting a bunch of fun things in the background, it makes it a whole lot more interesting. So I'm going to dry this, and I think I'm happy with that. Me thinks. You okay? Sorry. <laughs> I'm crunchy. You're crunchy? Oh, you're snap crackling and popping. Yeah. I think we got snow coming or something. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt the fates. It's either snow or rain because I'm crunchy today. Well, that's how my hands were this week. They were so bad I couldn't paint, couldn't yeah. draw, couldn't... No, it was anyway. humid the last couple of days. Oh, it was miserable. I don't know. What, what, what's the weather forecast today? It's yeah, apparently warm. it's going to be sunny. Yeah. For the next couple of days. Wednesday since new. Probably won't last long. No. It's also the temperatures we're, have been quite high. Yeah, we're also back into sink single digits yep so positive and negative single digits yep which is good so there yeah, we go good. 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 i'm happy with that i think it's subdued enough i think one more coat might might make it a little too faint but we just want to sort of knock it back a little bit so that it doesn't take over so i'm going to age the edges of this a little bit just using a little bit of a schvalten. And I'm going to get a nice big angled shader here. Ooh. My beat up black gold. <laughs> There's pizza. I forgot. There's pizza. <laughs> you can think of his stomach at a time like this. Sorry, you think with your stomach at a time like this. <laughs> Always. Always. <laughs> so we're going to... Just add a little shadow to the outside edge here, all the way along, with just a float of asphaltum. Now, I've heavily thinned this. Don't need to overthink it. It's just putting a little age at the edges of the panel. And I'm using a fair amount of water. You can use such fast dry glaze if you want to. I'm just using water for this one. And I, again, I've thinned this out quite a bit because I just want to age it a little. I don't want a heavy, dark outline on there. There we go. So when I do this, when I put a darker shadow around the outside edge, it accomplishes two things. One, it puts all of our highlight right in the center of this which is where our flowers are going to go. And so it sort of draws, helps draw the eye to the center and to those flowers because we've got a lighter value in here. And then it also acts sort of as a frame to support the design that's going in the middle. So I'm going to dry that and then we're ready to trace and transfer our line drawing to this surface. This is a really forgiving technique. You can mess this up and it's such an easy one to fix. Because if it gets a little too overworked, you just thin out a little bit of warm white, apply a light. So the thinner you make that paint, the better. That way you have complete control over how dark or how light this gets. Um, I keep turning this thing around. I've got a postcard there and it was upside down. So I'm going to go with it this way. This is our line drawing. I'm going to, this is my usual method. I always cut mine out. I make a photocopy of my original line drawing and then I cut it out so that it fits the surface that I'm working on. 
So if it's a bunny shape, well then I cut it out, cut out the whole bunny shape. If it's heart shaped or square, then I just cut it out. It just makes putting your line drawings on that much simpler. So I've got mine arranged. <laughs> of course, you know I use this one because of this. I've got cancellation stamps all over the place on this one. So I'll just position my line drawing onto my surface. And I'm going to tape it in place because I don't want it to shift. Here we go. And I'm going to be using a little bit of gray graphite. Now, my favorite gray graphite is the one that has seen a lot of use, like this one, because I find it just gives me a little bit more control. And it's not so heavy. I don't like it when I get heavy, dark lines everywhere. So, remember, dull side down so that we have graphite on the surface and not on the back of my line drawing because I have done that. Now I'm using my Uniball, my red Uniball. It's the only reason I use this particular one is because it's a 0.38, which means that it's a very fine point. And I like the red so that I can see where I've been. And that way I don't miss any line drawings when I'm tracing. And daffodils are very forgiving to trace. So if you goof up and you miss, don't stay perfectly on the line, it's okay. It just becomes part of the petal. There we go. And to make sure I got my leaves in. We still have about three feet of snow everywhere. So, and we haven't really gotten a big snowfall this winter. I was, was cringing and panicking over 25 or 30 centimeters of snow. We have seen snowstorms where we get an awful lot more than that. So 30 centimeters, I mean, we barely get the snowblower out for that. But we haven't really seen a major snowfall this year. Just a whole bunch of little ones. So we used to, we have a good amount of snow. Not a huge amount, but we have a good amount. But I think everybody's just tired of the snow at this point, tired of the cold. And I'm just looking forward to opening windows. I like my fresh air. So I'm looking forward to opening my windows. It's almost time for spring cleaning. Looking forward to that too, because I love the love it when the house gets its go over in the spring. Everything's nice and fresh. The walls are all done. The windows are all done. And once all that's out of the way, then we can start worrying about the gardens. And our planting season here is a little later than than most, but I'm looking forward to putting my garden in this year. I didn't do much with it last year. Just too much of other things going on, so I'm looking forward to that this year. So I'm just about finished tracing this on. Again, I don't worry too much about the accuracy of this because these flowers are quite forgiving. And I think I missed a few. <laughs> Didn't press hard enough in a couple of places. There we go. I 
There we go. So I've got my daffodils traced on. I don't think you guys will be able to see them. I can barely see them, so. But they're clear enough. I am going to grab my, my mechanical pencil. There's a couple little spots here I want to adjust. Just to make them a little darker so that a little easier to see. There we go. All right. So the fun part about doing this is that none of these colors need to be really, really strong or intense. And we're going to work with some pretty simple brushes, nothing extravagant. And I do have some fun stuff planned for this too. So we're going to start with a little bit of sour apple. This is a rather in your face green, but this is what we're using for all of our greenery in this piece for all of these leaves. And I'm using a little bit of Joe Sonia's as my medium of choice, but this can be done with water. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have the medium for this. And I'm going to, I'm going to use a nice big round, nice little round. I've got this one. This is an, a number six water lily round. Any number six will work just fine or a number five. You just need a good size round brush. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way here. And we're going to thin out our paint for this. So I'm going to use a little bit of that Joe Sonia's. And I'm going to thin out that paint. <laughs> this green is so vibrant. So the idea behind this is to use these heavily thinned colors to do this. And I'm just going to apply them in the direction of the surface or the direction of what I'm painting. So the leaves go vertically. So I'm just going to put a wash of that color in on the stem area. And I'm going to put a wash of it on these leaves. And yes, we're going to be able to see that paper right through the image. That's okay. The nice part about this is if you want them a little bit darker, just let it dry and then put on another coat. I like the transparency of this, letting all of that that print design in the background become part of the overall design. So I'm going to put a little more of that green in there. And then we have the stem too. And then the leaf over here. Such a vibrant green, very springy, very, very springy. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then I think I'm gonna give it another coat. Just think it's a little wanting, vibrancy wise, I want it to be a little more intense. So I'm going to dry this. I love this sour apple. It's just such a lively green. There we go. So one more coat of that heavily thinned. And I think 
it will be exactly what I wanted. So I just wanted that nice vibrant green. I don't have daffodils planted. Um, some of the critters here have a tendency to dig up bulbs. So I don't have a lot of things that have bulbs because the little buggers pull them up and eat them. So, but I am anxiously awaiting. I have some beautiful columbine and I love it when they come up. There's just such a brilliant purple and pink. They're beautiful. So I'm looking forward to that. And about five years ago, I put a very lovely blue, blue colored hydrangea in my front flower bed. And my beloved husband pruned all of the shrubs last and not last fall but the fall before and he pruned my rhododendron right back to the ground and he pruned back my hydrangea right to the ground um so it did come back both the rhododendron and the hydrangea came back however the hydrangea did not bloom so i'm kind of hoping um that it'll do better this year. So last spring, um, when it came up, I had fingers crossed and one tiny little bud, one little tiny flower on it. So I'm kind of hoping that this year, the unpruned plant will produce some beautiful flowers. So there we have our sour apple. Just such a pretty, vibrant green. I love it. So the shading color for those leaves is plantation pine. You guys know that. I use plantation pine all the time. It's sort of my go-to green when it comes to shading any green tone, simply because, one, it's nicely transparent. Um, I find some of them are very grayed out um, or sometimes even too green, but I really like the tone of this one. So I've got a little bit of Joe Sonia's on my brush and a little bit of plantation pine. And I've got a nice little blend. And I'm going to shade underneath the blossom. That brush is too big. I'm going to switch to a smaller one. Much better. I think. I think it is. Good gravy. So I'm just separating and getting these shadows underneath that underneath those petals, underneath those flowers. That's what we're focusing on is just separating those elements. And do the same thing over here. And then we're going to come back in with that same color 
and we're going to shade that center vein on those leaves. There we go. Now remember, this is a really forgiving. So if those shadows are not absolutely perfect, don't fuss with them too much. There's no real need. And then I'm going to separate these leaves and stems in here with a float so there we go and then we've got a shadow on this center vein in here right there and then there's a stem little shadow there as well and that one's going to go right down one side so not too bad so it's a pretty simple pretty simple leaf nothing too drastic and don't worry too much if they don't look all that smooth because honestly it doesn't matter not yet this is going to have a very loose feel to it by the time we're done and that's what we want nice loose water colored look by the time we're finished so we have leaves in place now we're going to be doing a similar technique to these there's very little highlighting involved it's mostly shading now I'm going to use a little bit of warm white and I'm going to thin out a little bit more of that um, sour apple for our highlight, which means I'm just going to pick up a little bit of warm white and a little bit of that sour apple. I just want to make a lighter value, that's all. Sort of a lemon lime color for lack of a better term. And we're going to use that to just to add a little highlight in a few places. Now well, the dog went outside. Oh, did she? Yeah. Dad's got her outside. No, I took her outside. Oh, okay. Did she chase the squirrels? Uh, nope. Did she try to chase the squirrels? No, she just wanted to roll in the snow. Oh, okay. It makes her happy rolling in the snow. And then brought her back inside, and yeah. Now Dad and the dog are having a fart competition. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I think <Good>. Dad's winning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what is the garage? <laughs> so I'm just using a little bit of that thinned sour apple mixed I just mixed a little touch of warm white with it just to change the value slightly that's all nothing fancy just to give it a little brightened spot and again I thinned it out so there's not a ton of paint there it's not very opaque let's put it that way so that is pretty much the extent of those leaves it's not a major undertaking now if you want to deepen them I did I when I but I wait until my flowers are done I go around with a little bit of asphaltum and I deepen some of those shadows but I'll do that once I do it to the flowers and then we'll do it all at once so our flowers um, are going to be done with sunny day 
What? There was another donation. Did I miss it? Did you do- miss it? Did I miss a donation? Well, you weren't here. You took the buffers out. Give me one second. I gotta see who sent. <laughs> oh, it won't let me go that far back. <laughs> Guys are chatting too much. <laughs> So I'm going to use a little bit of that Joe Sonia's and this is sunny day. Now I chose sunny day because it's very bright and sunny and very lovely yellow. And it's also a little on the transparent side. So I'm going to fill in the entire daffodil, every little bit of it right over all of the line work because I can because I can see it right through it so thinned sunny day does not have to be perfect that's why I say use one of these you know nice fat round I'm using this number six but you could use whatever size works for you Oh, is Rebecca? Rebecca donated $10? Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Doesn't even show up on our on our stream feed. Weird. Well, I'm looking at it. So there we go. This just makes... I just love this yellow. It's just such a pretty yellow. Lello. A pretty Lello. Easy peasy. I'm not seeing any... Oh, there. You got the Facebook in front of you? I do. Yeah, Lillian, I'm glad you like that. I've been trying to figure out a way to, to get that palette in here. Um, there's only so much room on this table, unfortunately, so that we get everything underneath the camera. So sometimes it's not easy. In this case, I'm not having to have a lot of stuff or even a big surface. So I have a little extra room. So I'm just filling in my daffodil. One daffodil. And I love that I can still see all of that print right through. Just makes this piece interesting. And remember, that petal is in behind that leaf. So. Easy peasy. This is a fast and easy technique. It takes you longer to actually develop the background for this than it does to actually paint flowers. Because the flowers are very forgiving. Easy, easy, easy. Easy works. Sometimes I just like something simple to paint. I've been having entirely too much fun with that bunny. I have bunny designs galore now. I wasn't painting earlier in the week because my hands were acting up. So um, I used my time instead to play with some ideas. And uh, 
I came up with a whole bunch of things. So <laughs> I got to play a little bit. Okay, so I have daffodils. Now, none of this color is perfect. None of it is even, not perfectly even. It has a very loose, almost watery effect to it because we wanted it that way. So it's heavily thinned. You're going to see a lot of that texture that we put in that background, all of that print, that text. It's all going to show through, which just makes this more interesting, in my view. So we're going to start adding um, some color to these daffodils. And we're going to start with a little bit of orange flame or saffron yellow, I think. So we're going to go with saffron yellow first, because I like saffron yellow. It's a nice in-your-face school bus. If you don't have saffron yellow, um, another color that works really well is this one at Sunset Gold. It's a little deeper. It's not quite as lemony. Uh, it's a little bit deeper, but it's a beautiful yellow, and it works really well for what we're doing here. I chose colors like this before their transparency, and the saffron yellow has a it's fairly transparent so which is why I chose it so I'm going to I'm gonna get my big angled shader out here I get my this is my uh, half inch angled shader I'm not quite dry here that's the downside to thinning everything out there's more water in it <laughs> I'll make sure everything is dry. So we have all of these fun little ruffles and ripples in the edges of the petals. And that's going to make for some interesting things. So we're going to start separating all of these petals. And I'm going to use a little bit of Joe Sonia's, my favorite float medium. So half inch angle, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that saffron yellow. A little more generous than I usually do. And we're going to blend it well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if they can hear it or not. I hope they can. It's hilarious. <laughs> you can hear the squeaky toy just going nuts upstairs. <laughs> so we're going to start shading under these petals with that saffron yellow. And you're going to come about one third of the way. It's very loose. This is where we're going to separate the petals. I do love this saffron yellow. No, oh, they can't hear it. <laughs> it would have been funny. Dot squeaky toy. So, again, I am separating everything. Now, I've got a lot of glaze in my brush, so it's very watery. I've thinned these colors out quite a bit. And so the floats are not meticulous, sharp edged floats. They're going to have a watery look. We just want to get the darker value in towards the center and underneath. So we develop the shape of all of these flowers. And then I'm going to take that same color into the throat of this daffodil. And make a nice little U-shaped float in the mouth of the dash daffodil like that. Again, darkest in here. Let it just let it run out. And I'm going to do the same thing to the, this daffodil down here. So separate all those petals. And when I said this was loose, it's loose. It's really loose. And we've got a daisy, a daisy, a petal back there. And 
then we have to get into the mouth of this one as well. But I'm coming right to the ruffle on this one. Just like so. And then underneath the ruffle, because it's, we're going to leave a little bit of a space and then we're going to put a nice little shadow underneath the ruffled edge of that flower. Like so. And that's going to establish the overall shape of these flowers. Sort of break them up so they don't look like a yellow blob anymore. So I'm going to dry this. And then we're going to add that color to the center veins on all of these petals. So now they're really going to start taking on some shape. Just make sure everything is good and dry so I don't move it. So center vein. I love this yellow. I just think it's so vibrant. Oops, I missed one here. There we go. A little petal peeking up over here. That didn't get its just dessert. <laughs> and that little center vein is important getting those in place because it's going to help define the shape, how those petals bend and how they move. There we go. So now we've established the shape of those petals and it's really loose. Don't overthink it, just put it in. And I'm going to dry this and we're going to use our second color, which is a little bit of orange flame. Now, this second float's going to be a little bit smaller than the first one. We want to maintain some of that bright yellow. So we are going to use the, the orange flame with a little bit of reserve. Not a lot, but a little. Saw another spot that I missed. Good heavens, I'm not firing on all cylinders today. Get that saffron up underneath the ruffle on my... There we go. Much better. So, um, I think it was Karen Wilson. I had a couple of questions in reference to... Um, the orange that I was using, what they could use instead of orange flame. Um, you can use bright orange and you can also use warm sunset. Either one of those oranges is going to work really well. But quite honestly, you could use almost any nice bright orange. I just happen to really like orange flame. Now, here is some bright orange. Oh, that's jack o -lantern. That's not bright orange. This is orange flame or warm sunset right here. Not quite as fiery, but it is a nice rich orange and it will work just fine with these yellows. But I am a fan of orange flame. So that's what I'm using. A little bit brand new bottle. Linda Morgan thought she could catch up by pressing the pause button. Nope. <laughs> oh. What's for dinner? We're having breakfast for dinner. <gasps> so fried, yeah. fr fried spatzle mm. and uh, mm. bacon and sausage. and Bacon, sausage, hash browns. Ones, yep, the ones you really like. Oh, oh. peppers. And, Yum. Yep, so hash browns and, and then the griddle uh, it. Yep, and uh, eggs. Of course. Or whatever you want them. You can have omelets or you can whatever. But we're having breakfast for dinner. 
So I'm using a little bit of orange flame. I have a tendency to thin this color out a little bit because it is in your face orange. And so I'm going to use this to shade my daffodils. So wherever those petals <laughs> overlap. Fried what? <laughs> <laughs> Spatzel. Spätzle. Fried Spätzle. It's a German dumpling, kind of like a noodle. Dumpling noodle thingy. Yeah. My kids grew up on them. Mm. They still good. <laughs> Spätzle. 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 It's German food. Yep. It's West German food. <laughs> <laughs> so that thinned orange flame is your shading color. So wherever that saffron is, you're going to put a smaller, narrower float of this orange flame over top of it. So heavily thinned so that you get a nice, soft, watery look. And you want it narrower than the first float. So all it's going to do is deepen your yellow significantly. Oh, Jessica's got a sinus cold. Oh, no. She was... says, there is a God. My husband just got back with my sinus medication. <laughs> <laughs> sinus cold crap is pure rotten. Yep. Take them meds. Take them. And then have a nap. Yep. Take them and have a nap. When you're feeling crappy, there is nothing like a nap to make you feel better. Eh. Rest. It, rest, it, rest, it, rest. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily make you feel better immediately, <laughs> but you will feel better. Spatzels is wonderful. Yes, yes it is. Especially leftover spatzel oh, and it's so good. fried with onions and bacon. They're and yummy. And some scrunchins. And some scrunchins. <laughs> <laughs> Renee likes his scrunchins. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's pure flavor. Uh-huh. Onions, scrunchions. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do a little bit of garlic in there. Oh, pff, I always do a little bit of garlic <laughs> in there. Who are you? Have we met? So there's that little bit of orange flame in there. I just I love what this does for yellows. And you don't need a lot of it. What was it that Karen made? Oh, it's got like a giant dill pickle in it. Oh, rouladen. Rouladen. That's it. So good. Yes, they are. Karen makes great rouladen. Yes. Mm. I make a pretty good sour bread. But she makes a great rouladen. So that little bit... That's what I love about Orange Flame is it's just got lots of heat, lots of attitude. It's just a great color for this. And then I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to put a nice little U-shaped float along the bottom. If, now, if you like Rouladen GL, talk to Karen. Yep, yeah, Karen Jones. Karen Jones will give you an awesome recipe for roulade. <laughs> yep. So we have a ruffle on this little daffodil. And here's the trick. If you take a little bit of that orange flame, thinned, and we're going to put just a loose little U-shaped float like that into that little dip don't overthink it just tuck it in there don't 
putz with it too much because you don't need to. Oh, Linda Sifranco, my mom says, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. Oh my goodness, Mary Amos, this is Linda's mom. She's now home. She's out of the rehab and home. Awesome. So that's great. So now she'll be off terrorizing very soon. I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, Mary, we've been thinking about you. Believe me. And then her birthday was the other day. So had to send her out a bunch of birthday wishes. Linda's mom watches this from her home in Florida. So we've got our ruffle. I like to take a little bit, and it's nothing fancy. It's just a loose little float in those dips. You need to keep some. The one that dips toward you is the highlight part. The one that dips away from you is the sh shadowed part. So try not to overthink. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just putting a little bit of saffron in the in this one. And again, I am not, I'm not overthinking this one. Just a little bit. It's just going to give you the illusion that there's a nice little ruffle in there. Hmm. Renee Howard, we have a daffodil parade in April. Oh my! Floats daffodils. all covered in daffodils, school marching bands, daffodil queen and princesses. Wow. It's a big event. Cool. Yeah. Your town or city must be known for daffodils then. If that, it, it's the only reason to have a parade in referencing to daffodils. True. Must be well, your... There's the Rose Bowl parade. They cover the floats with roses. Yeah. Daffodils would be pretty though. See, we would have the same thing here except ours grows wild. So everybody's lawn is covered in our provincial flower. Yeah. So there's no point in having a parade. <laughs> our, provin our provincial flower is the uh, wild violet, the purple violet. Yeah. And we get lots of them. Purple and white violets. We get them all over our lawn early in the spring. Technically a weed. Technically. <laughs> yeah. But they're beautiful. But they are nice. Yeah. So look at that. We, we, have, we, we have struck daffodil. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to deepen all of this shading with a float of asphaltum. And this one is really simple. All we're doing is just deepening a few things just to sharpen up the image. I love that all of that is still showing through. So it helps them stay light and transparent because we can see all of those elements through it. And Eschfaltum is that is my favorite. It's like my favorite. Eschfaltum. D A one eight zero. So I have Eschfaltum on my palette. I'm going to use lots of Joe Sonia for this. Not a lot of Eschfaltum. I'm not putting a ton of color on my brush, but lots of glaze. And this is where I get to define some of these petals a little bit better. Sharpen up a few edges. Sharpen up some of the detail. It doesn't take much. We don't need to have a ton of color on there. But that little bit of asphaltum does lovely things. So this is where I like to separate my flowers, my petals, a little bit of asphalt. Our flowers get a little more lively, a little more defined. And then you can go right over top of those all those little indentations that we just put in there with a little float of that thin dashfaltum 
just gives a little more definition to those petals. A little more definition to those shadows. Now for this, keep all of those colors heavily thinned so that you're not struggling with the heavy handed shading. So look at that. I like that that little bit of asphaltum helps define things. And it is just a tiny wash of color. You don't need to have a ton of it. So don't be afraid. If you find you don't have enough shading, you can always put more in. It doesn't hurt. If you want it a little darker in places, you can always go back over. It isn't going to hurt anything. But I am going to show you a little trick. If you feel that the shading is not quite dark enough to suit you, but you're a little nervous about redoing it, afraid that it's going to get too dark, I'm going to show you a little trick that just makes things a little simpler. I love Eschfalton for this, that I can adjust it so easily. So there we go. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I got a little spot here I want to tighten up. I'll show you a little trick. So we've got all of that shading in and it's pretty well adjusted, but it looks a little flat. So you can punch up the lighter areas to make those darker areas seem a little darker. So we're just going to, instead of changing the value of the shadows, we're going to change the value of the highlighted areas. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that thinned sunny day, and I'm going to add a little bit of warm white to it. Just a little. I only want to change the value of that yellow a touch, not a ton. So, and this is fairly watery because I want to stick to that thinned look. I'm going to put that float of that heavily thinned sunny day with that little touch of warm white and I'm just going to go opposite that shadow. So at any time that you feel that perhaps your shadows are not quite dark enough and you are a little leery of deepening them thinking that you might get a little too dark this is a great way to, to assess that, is just pull in a little of that warm white. So I'm taking a little of that highlight color. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that warm white in. So wherever I think I need a little more contrast, which is usually in the highlight area, I'm just going to put a little bit of that thinned yellow where I've added just a touch of that warm white to it. And just a touch, you don't need a lot. And so we have a nice, there's our pretty little daffodil. So remember what I said about the asphaltum, I'm going to use that same wash of heavily thinned asphaltum and I'm going to come in underneath and over top all of that plantation pine just to deepen that shading a little. Don't want a ton of it but just a little especially underneath the flowers. I want to deepen that shading a touch and at the same time it just gives these leaves a nice earthy look. 
little float of that asphaltum just to deepen those shadings. And I think I'm happy with that. So I can come back in at any time if there's anything that I feel needs to be punched up a bit. Maybe my, maybe some of my orange isn't as lively as I wanted it to be. I can come back in, put another thin float of that color in. So whenever something appears to, you know, perhaps have gotten a little lost or it's lost its vibrancy and I want to get a little more of that heat back, there's nothing thing to stop you from putting in a little float of that heavily thinned orange or any one of the colors that you've used to be quite honest so you can adjust at any time so whenever something's looking a little peaky and i want to tweak it i can just do that with a little wash of that thinned color so we have daffodils time to dry them and then we're going to add a little bit to the center of our flower, which is pretty simple. We're not doing anything too elaborate. These are not hyper realistic by any stretch of the imagination, but they are quite pretty and it's quite a simple design. So I'm going to take my, got the handle of my rigger and I'm going to use a little bit of that orange flame and I'm going to add just a few little dip dots in here, like so, with the orange flame. And I'm going to do the same thing again with a little bit of warm white. Just a few little dip dots. I'm a fan of dip dots. Dip dots are just an easy way to add a little bit of interest and a little bit of texture to the centers of flowers. And I'm going to let that dry. And then the fun part, we're going to be using a, a gel pan to add some details to this. I just think this is a fun and it's a really easy technique. It's a great way to, to come up with a project or work on a project and practice all of your floating and your washes and highlight placement, shading placements. It's just an easy project for that. And it's a seasonal thing, so it's something you can hang up. can add a lot of fun things to this if you wanted to and I've got a couple of fun things that we're going to add to it so I'm going to set this aside for just a second we're going to paint our butterfly now this one is just a chipboard butterfly but we're going to work with um, the same colors that we used for our daffodil and we're going to use the same technique so I'm going to use some thinned sunny day on the wings and I'm going to dry that this was chipboard I have to hold it down otherwise it'll blow across the room because I've already done that once today And we have a yellow butterfly or schmetterlinge. And the same way we painted the flowers, I'm going to put a float of saffron yellow closest to the body, like so. What a nice big float. And I want that yellow to come out about two thirds of the way, like so. So I have a nice bright, and it's darkest, closest to the body. 
of the butterfly and then it gradually fades out towards the edge of the wings. Super easy. Am I going to have to zoom in on that? Nope. I think they're okay. So everything that we've done to the daffodils, we're going to do to this butterfly. So our next float is a little bit of that orange flame. I don't want it too strong and I don't want it as big as the first float, but it's going to be as close to the body like so. Easy peasy. Now you can take your time and make this as realistic as you want. That's entirely up to you. Mine is going to be a little simpler. So I'm going to put a float of warm white on the outer edges of the wings on this one. So a little float of warm white and I'm just going to put it right on the edge of the wings. Just like so. Just a little bit. I don't want a ton of it on there. Don't need a ton of it on there. So we've got a little highlight. The tips and edges of the wings. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a stencil. Um, put some little polka dots on this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this as simply as possible. I do have to get some black paint. If I can reach my black paint <laughs> without getting all of the portions of my anatomy in my palette. There we go. So I got some. I stopped buying black paint in little bottles and I only buy it in these big eight ounce bottles now because I kept running out of black paint. So just a little bit. I don't need a ton of it. And I'm going to use my rigger and we're just going to put a little body on our dragonfly here. And I'm going to add a little detail to the wings with little dip dots. I have a thing for dip dots. So I'm going to start with one here and have three going up. And then here, I have a thing about threes. Just like I have a thing for I'm discovering, I have all sorts of mini obsessions lately. Not the least of which is butterflies and bugs. And... So I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to add some fun little details to this. So a little highlight on our butterfly is just going to be a little white dot and a line. So we have a highlight on our butterfly. And then I'm going to grab my gel pen. I've got my 0.38. And this one is getting just a squiggly line. I like squiggly lines. all around the outside edge of the wing. You can go back over it a couple of times. It just makes it a little more interesting so it doesn't look like you just drew a hard edged line around everything. I kind of like this squiggly overlapping line. It just makes it more interesting and a little more fun. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom wing. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be neat. It's just a nice little detail added to the wings. Gives them some texture and some movement and a little bit of interest. And there we have our butterfly. Now, if you really want to, you could throw a whole bunch of detail in there. You could add polka dots. You could add glitter to this if you wanted. It's a schmetterling. It's a schmetterling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flutterby. So how pretty is that? Something simple. I mean, you can be as elaborate as you want with the butterfly. If you want a really detailed, um, more realistic butterfly, by all means, go for it. But uh, I'm going with simplicity today. So I'm going to move that palette out of the way so I don't put my arm in it again. Because <laughs> I've done that already today. A little too excited painting bun bunnies. So I'm going to use my black gel pen. And remember what we did to the edge of the butterfly? We're going to do the same thing to each of the petals. And I like that irregular line that's very squiggly and overlaps it. It's just a fun way to detail things. And it keeps this looking soft. Um, my only problem with doing this with a, a different marker or with a brush is that it gets a little too hard edged. And I kind of like the, the loose feel of this using those fine overlapping lines. You still get to outline things, to define things, but without this heavy line so it doesn't add a whole lot of visual weight to whatever you're doing so you can start literally scribbling in some details so all of that ruffling at the edge of the petals this just adds to that and just over trace it they don't have to be exactly on time I kind of like that where it kind of gives you an, an irregular edge and a regular line just follows the general shape. Hey, have a good weekend, Lucy. Lucy's off for the weekend. Ooh, nice. And the vacation. Everybody needs a little downtime. Janet says, this is a beautiful project and might be just the one that finally makes me pick up the paint brushes again. Well, this one is very forgiving. It's fun to do. And you can use this technique for almost anything. So if you have a line drawing of a flower that you're particularly enamored with, try doing it this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use your own colors. You can use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have the tissue paper, make some. Use your stamps or stencils to create your background. And then just put a wash of white over top of it. If it gets you creating and thinking outside of your box, it's not a bad thing. If it gets you to pick up the brushes, it's not a bad thing. I just like this. It's just very loose. It's fun. And it's creative. You can do whatever you want with this. If you don't like daffodils, find a nice picture of some daisies or some tulips or whatever you like and use the same technique all you need is a not is a line drawing you don't need to have a huge amount of materials us painters have always got paint and lots of it
I just like this, the scribbly lines. It just makes for a soft detail to these pieces. Easy peasy. And we're almost finished. We're almost ready to finish off our our background. Wow, no lettering? No lettering. You could put lettering if you wanted to, yeah, you but could. you don't have to. Uh, the pen is a Uniball Signo 0.38 millimeter. Yep, it's a very fine pen. We have them on the website. I am going to be getting some more of the Feng Twang pens in as well, um, but I was really glad to see my, my Uniball Signos. I really do like this pen. I like the Feng Tuan too. It's a very nice pen. So I've got all of my little sketchy stuff done. So now we're going to finish off the details on this. It's super simple. I'm going to grab my vintage note stamp, my cancellation stamp. Of course. And I used a, an old butterfly stamp that I had kicking around here and um, in this one right here. This was an old Stampendous one. Unfortunately, they're not really available anymore. Um, Sandy might have some on her website. Deb might have some on her website. Um, but I wanted to point out that you don't have to use that exact butterfly stamp. You don't have to use it at all if you don't want to. Um, I did find these. These are from Recollections. These were um, at our local Michael store. So that's what I'm going to use today. Because it really honestly doesn't matter. It's If you don't like butterflies, maybe you like dragonflies instead. Go ahead and use a dragonfly. Did I lose my butterfly? <laughs> I can't find my butterfly. Oops. I lost my butterfly. Unless I... Oh, for the love of pearl. Look on the floor. Nope. It's not on the floor. I don't know where my butterfly went. <laughs> I just painted it. Usually when I lose things, it's because I put them away. Oh, for the love of pearl. There it is. It went face down. <laughs> so I'm going to use this one, methinks. This is a pretty one. So these ones were available in local Michael store. I'm going to put this one on an acrylic block. And I'm going to dig out my stays on stamp pad. So I have my butterfly on there and a very juicy stamp pad because I just refilled it. So I'm going to, I'm going to use my vintage note stamp first because I'm a little obsessed. So I'm, oh, wrong one. Oh, they were trying to help you. They even said under the painter's tape. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sorry, just washed my brain. Can't do a thing with it. Okay, I'm going to. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of. The stamp pad isn't as juicy as I wanted it to be. There we go. I'll try this one. Yep, that's the one I want. How do I know? I managed to get ink all over myself. Good gravy, Murray. Okay, let's try this again. I wanted a really juicy stamp pad. There we go. So I'm going to, yes, 
I'm going to use my stamp pad just to put a little bit of script here and there. I don't necessarily want a ton of it on there, but I want a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to use my cancellation stamp because you know I have to have that. There's one in the background here. There's another one over there. I just, I felt a theme. So I'm going to add a couple of my own. There we go. There. So I've got a couple of cancellation stamps here and there. I rather like that. And then uh, I've got this butterfly stamp. Now, I firmly believe you don't have to have butterflies all over the place. You don't, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But I'm kind of fond of it. So I'm going to press one. And I missed. How did I do that? There we go. Good lord. So I've got a butterfly. And I kind of like having that two layers. So we've got, you know, that text, the, that script, the cancellation stamps off in the background. And then we've added more by pulling them darker and out towards the foreground. And then we're going to add our colored butterfly to this. And I'm using a little bit of Aileen's Tacky Clear to adhere my Flutterby. I like this glue. And then I'm going to decide where I'm putting it. So I'm thinking I'm going to let it overlap the other butterfly. So I'm going to press that into place. And there we go. So I rather like that. And that is our watered color daffodils. Super easy, don't you think? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's super easy. Scrolling through your chat. Ah, okay. So you do not have to use precisely what I used in this first one. Now, one of the things that I did to this one, I have not done to this one, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. I kind of like that worn, distressed, aged look at the outside edges. Uh, this one still has a little bit of light to it. You really want to brighten that. Take your stamp pad and just rub the edges like so. The sharper the angle, the narrower that border. The deeper the angle, you're going to get more color on the surface. So you can control where you get dark edges. I'm a fan. I like this effect. Same with the broken paint or chipped paint look. I like that too. And that works really well. This butterfly does not want to stay put. So I'm going to put a weight on it while it dries. This is the downside. This one is made out of chipboard. So I'm going to put a weight on it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we work with what we've got. You know? <laughs> so I just, until the glue dries, that way I've got... I'm going to have a butterfly that's actually stuck to the surface. So that is our watered color daffodils. It's a super easy project. Really, you don't need a ton of supplies to do it either. So we have three giveaways today. Oh, that's, uh, and we're that, at that point already. <laughs> that button. 
that button. So we have three giveaways today and in them are uh, there is an art stuff bag. Of course, we fill that with some goodies from either Tombow, uh, from M Square. We have goodies in there from uh, TracyMoreau.net. And we have a uh, lovely little goodie in there. A Tracy Morrow signature stencil brush from Dynasty Brush is in there. We have three of those to give away. The value is about $35, which is a nice little piece of happy mail to get in the middle of the week. So... How many names do we have on that wheel today? Do you want to know? It'd be helpful. We have 207. Nice. 207 names on the wheel today. And for those of you that haven't been with us before, if you want to get your name on the wheel, all you got to do is hit the share button. Either or on... Like or the like button or the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Any one of those things will get your name on the, the on the wheel of names. So it'll be interesting to see whose name comes up. We have, we've had a bunch of winners lately. The girls have been posting their winnings online, which is nice to see. I'm tickled pink when they get the good ones. Elsie Sturm, going to spend the afternoon painting. Good for you. And the first one is uh, Lillian's Zick. Zay Lillian Zeich. Zeich? Zeich. Zeich. I do believe Lillian is from Alberta. Is she? I think so. I think so. That's one. <laughs> I have quite the mess going on here. Got stuff everywhere. <laughs> so that's number one. We get two more. Two more. <laughs> Rebecca Swing Wallace. Awesome sauce, Rebecca. So your goodies are already packed up. They're already labeled. They got the postage on them. We're just going to put your shipping information on them. So if you're watching, uh, don't forget, click on the little speech bubble on the homepage of my website at tracymoreau.net and send me a message with your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. And anything that is unclaimed after two weeks goes back in the bin and we hang on to them for future draws. Not that we ever seem to run out. <laughs> <laughs> We have tons. So this is the last one. Wait for that wheel to go. Carol Gansey. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Carol Gansey. That's fantastic. So ladies, you've got uh, some goodies coming your way. Some Dynasty, uh, Tracy Moreau signature Dynasty stencil brushes coming your way. You brushes. Brand new ones. You yeah, brushes. you brushes. Me brushes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Me brushes. <laughs> That's my textured stencil brush. It's got, uh, it's kind of nifty. And it's a natural hair brush. It's nice. It's one of my faves. You. <laughs> I'm watching the chat. Awesome. So that is it for us today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and that you got something out of it. Next Saturday, we are painting the crocus. So it's a fun and easy one. It's very relaxed. Same technique. We're going to do something fun with that. And um, it, the neat part is, is this translates really well to a variety of surfaces. So this could be done on canvas. It can also be done on watercolor paper or even in your journals. So if you're a fan of working in your journal, then try this technique in it because it works really, really well. And it's super simple and you can customize it a variety of ways. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, don't forget, March 25th, mark your calendar, we have a special spring special event for you and we're painting that cute little bunny i think he's adorable don't you think he's cute i think he's cute and i've incorporated some neons just to make renee happy yeah. there's no glitter <laughs> yay no glitter but we do have neons so he's a happy camper i like the neons yeah 
So um, I know that the kits are marked as sold out on the website right now. We will get some more up this afternoon as soon as we are done here. And uh, I know that we have lots in stock, but we are ordering some more because I have a funny feeling they're, we're going to need them. So, um, and then in reference to the conversation that we had last Saturday, everybody sent me tons of ideas for uh, the cattle tags and for new signs for other farm animals and other creatures and critters. So I uh, sat down and had a chat with Karen at Southern Ridge Trading. And between the two of us, we've come up with, get this, six new surfaces. So we have a total of six. Yes, we did. Six? I thought it was four. Oh, that was just for the farm animals. Oh. <laughs> and, no, it's not six. It's eight. Sorry, because we came up with um, for wild animals as well. So we did a fox. And nice. we did a bear. Okay. And a deer. And I can't remember what the other one is. A duck. No, it's not a duck. But it doesn't matter. So but we've you, got some But we've animals. got a border collie in there. And we've got a border collie in the farm animals. A border collie, a... Cat cat of course gotta have a cat yeah gotta have a barn cat yeah and a chicken and i can't for the life of me remember the other farm animal the other farm animal i know we have a bull nope it's not no, a bull no hang on i'll tell you can't be a pig karen beaupre is awesome she is wonderful to work with it's not a sheep um no it's not a sheep let me see okay so the the wild animals are uh, a bear, a fox, a raccoon, and a deer. Ah, okay. And the farm animals are, hang on. Please say donkey. No, we don't have a donkey. It's not a donkey. <laughs> we have a border collie, a chicken. A cat. A cat. And a, a highland cow. And a highland cow. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yes, Karen and I, we're busy. Okay, so we got a Highland cow, cat, a dog, a dog, yeah, border collie, yeah, yeah. and a chicken, and a chicken, and a chicken, chicken, not rooster, chicken, not rooster, yeah, and then in the wild animals we have a deer, a raccoon, a fox, and a bear. So those are going to be here. We sometime need a this squirrel. Week. We need a squirrel. <laughs> we'll worry about the squirrel later. Squirrel. <laughs> So, um, and then Karen sat down with me and we created a new piece for the wild animals. So it isn't a cattle tag for the wild animals. We have a new piece for that. So Karen is awesome to work with. And so we have some, uh, for the 25th, we have some really cool giveaways. So that is us. That is us. That's it for us. <laughs> <laughs> that is us. Yep. That's it for us this Saturday. Thanks again so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the big red subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you are notified whenever we go live yeah. or when we post new video. And think about hitting the blue join button. Yeah, that one doesn't hurt either. If you join, <laughs> uh, we have two levels of membership on my YouTube channel. One is for videos only, which gives you access to all of the videos that my membership group uses. Uh, uh, does those are from all of the live classes that we have taught in the last almost two years wow <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot of a lot we're getting close to the two-year anniversary you know we that. are yes and then um that's one level uh just gives you access to all of those videos that are for members only and then the membership group itself um it you have access to not only all of those videos but you also have access to all of the material that we have used in the last two years which is quite a lot i've been on the server there's a lot of stuff on there <laughs> um, we have challenges every month we have free pattern and a free live class to members and and then we have prices that we give away we have three the night of the class and then we have a giveaway for the study challenge and a giveaway for the regular challenge <laughs> so everybody gets involved and we have a great time doing it so please consider joining us we have an awful lot of fun <laughs> and it's very creative so again thanks so much for joining us guys we love you and please stay safe bye pet your dog pet your dog <laughs>